So welcome to the Center of Astroparticle and Particle Physics. Uh, we are in the University of Zaragoza. Uh, today we have the pleasure of having uh, Michael Tovar uh, from Perth, UWA, uh, who gave a talk at Saturnalia Workshop. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Alba Tegui and well, I have a few questions for you. Sure. Uh, first of all, have you ever worked in other uh, research area and what did encourage you to specialize in this subject? Oh yes, so what, it, what, what encouraged me to, to go into this subject is that I'm very passionate to, under, to try and understand physics and come up with new physics and this, the area is uses precision measurement and when I was an undergraduate I did an electrical engineering degree and an applied mass and theoretical physics degree and that made me want to work on on experiments testing the foundations of, of physics. Okay, yes. And what stages of your formation would you say that were relevant for your knowledge about uh, this concrete topic? Oh yeah, the stages. So um, the, the important, uh, the PhD stage where I, when I decided what I wanted to do, um, I looked around Australia. Um, to see where the project I wanted to do was. And, and I took, uh, coming from Melbourne, I went to Perth because the, the project that did really fine engineering um, to look for fundamental physics was there. That was a gravitational wave detector, precision measurement, mm -hmm. and, and fundamentally limited by quantum mechanics. Optim and it's now the foundations of a lot of optomechanics. And these precision measurements that could, looking for gravity waves uh, is really that technology um, is what is the foundation of everything I have done since. And that's precision measurement looking for fundamental physics. Nice. And what type of challenges did you face when you start uh, as a researcher? Well, the, the, the challenge is, is, is always um, money um, to do research. And, and, and you know, you, when, you, when I first started um, this, these projects, I decided what, what did I want to to do and I wanted to cool the mechanical oscillator to its ground state in the 90s and that was with the resonant bar. That's what I wanted to do but I didn't get funding to do that. I got funding to do other things. So instead of doing what I wanted to do which was eventually done I don't know 10 years ago the first um, cooling of the mechanical oscillator to its ground state. Instead of that I started testing fundamental physics with precision, precision frequency because I got funding for that. So you're really dictated by the funding you can get. You might want to do something else when you're an experimentalist but if you don't get the money for it you can't. So that, that can be a little bit frustrating but you've got to look at the bright side and do what you can when you get the chance, opportunity. Yes, because it's known that you have accept an important research scholarship mm. uh, to help you with various projects. So. What do you think that is the most important factor uh, to receive one of these? The most important factor is uh, to, re to, to be successful is, is one, um, be enth enthusiastic at what you want to do. So that means you put all your energy into it. And another thing is to not be scared of not being successful. So you've got to be prepared to fail because you, you, you fail all the time to be successful. Um, so you, you, you just got to keep trying and you got to have motivation and you got to never give up. That's right. <laughs> and well, um, what factors have you considered to be the most important ones uh, to create a research team? Uh, for, to create a research team, there's, there's two things that are important. One is money, of course, and the other is personnel. Now, to get, you can't just, when you're building a research team, you just can't get anyone. And I've learned this the hard way. You just can't employ anyone who you think might be good based on a bit of paper. So this becomes about mentorship. So you get students, you mentor them, you develop them and you develop scientists and you, you develop people with the same enthusiasm for the work that you want to do. So I find mentor, so a lot of my students come on and then become postdocs with me and then they might go somewhere else. Or, and international connections, collaboration and in generally enjoying yourself and, and enjoying mentoring young people. That's how you build a team. So interesting. Mm. And well, um, the ADMX uh, became established and as a recognized experiment with very good results. Uh, what encouraged you to develop a other experiment that is similar in 
see. Yeah, well, so the, the thing is that the ADMX experiment, since I was doing cryogenics back in the 90s with resonant gravitational wave detectors doing microwaves, and I read the, AD, the original ADMX papers, and I always knew that was technology I could do. So I followed it. I followed this research through, you know, traveling, through uh, going to conferences, through reading papers. I followed this Axion research. And, and I knew it was something I could do in the future because all the technology I knew how to do, low noise microwaves, low noise high Q cavities. And as it became more and more um, ex exciting area to go into, I, got in, I, I came into the area and I tried to get funding. I tried to get funding to build this Axion detector. At first, I didn't succeed. I wrote about three research grants that failed to do this. Then finally, I got one. That, that succeeded, and then I built up from there, so. And, well, um, also in the ADMX, uh, they work like in some uh, frequencies, but you work in uh, other ones, and which ones are the most interesting ones? Well, see, this, see for, I'm an experimentalist, so I let the theorists tell me which are the most interesting um, so I'll, I will read their papers, and in particularly this um, paper on so-called smash theory predicts the frequency range where I want to look right now. So if a, another theorist says there's another interesting area and I read that and I think that sounds interesting, I will look there. Because there's such a vast space to look at, we experimentalists need to be guided by theorists. That's very important that theorists and experimentalists work together. Okay. Um, to finish with, uh how did the ideas for your projects come up? The ideas, well, all through the history of my career, I've got new ideas and they mainly come because I interact with the community. And this comes through going to conferences, um, um, you know, coming up with ideas with other people, like uh, with people from ADMX from a, a long time ago, I met at a Patras conference, we became friends, we started coming up with a few ideas and then that leads on to more collaboration. So you have to be open to the international community and you have to be open to looking at what's in the literature. And so that's what I do. I'm always looking. Luckily, we have Google Scholar now because now that tell me what now that tells me what I need to read. You know, instead of that looking, you know, <laughs> it just gives me notifications. But um, yeah, so you've got to keep in contact with what's going on, and you've got to keep going to conferences, especially coming from Australia. If we don't go to conferences, everyone forgets about us in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, that was all. So thanks for coming, and it was a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm happy to be here, and it was uh, it's fantastic.